I don't know how many of you can remember the song, but I grew up as a 70s, 80s child. I graduated in 1990 from high school and then Pink Floyd was a really big band back then. And there was this song called Comfortably Numb. Some of the lyrics said, half become comfortably numb. And as we talk about this week's um, scripture and topic, I want to just, that, that word keeps resonating with me, comfortably numb, because sometimes in our relationships, we can just become comfortably numb. We can start responding to the lack of life in relationship, and, and, and that lack of life in the relationship will uh, bear witness in our flesh and will ignite all kinds of um, protections that we just, you know, maybe old patterns and pathways we used to respond to in the flesh, and we can just coexist in this comfortably numb state. That's not what God's plan is for us. That's not what God's plan is for relationships. Although it is something that even I struggle to not fall into from time to time. But the Lord is continually taking me to life in Him in new places and teaching me through His wisdom because He is the good counselor how to stop responding to my numbness and start responding to His life, even in relationships. So the scripture that, that I kind of want to, that kind of goes with this, there's lots and lots of them, but this one really I think about it each time I get stuck here is found in Romans 8 and there's, it's actually Romans 8 and that whole chapter is amazing. If you struggle at all with um, living in life really in the, from life instead of looking for looking for the living among the dead, which is something the Lord tells me often. Like, Rhonda, stop looking for the living among the dead. This is a such a good chapter to just meditate on and let speak to you. Here in um, verse 5 and 6 from uh, uh, Romans chapter 8, it says, For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit set their um the things of the spirit for to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace and whether you believe it or not you can be in the most tumultuous situation surrounded by the most tumultuous people and circumstances and in the most tumultuous relationships and you could still respond from peace because peace doesn't come from peace with one another, our peace in that person. Peace comes from the person, Jesus Christ, who is our peace. And no matter what we're walking through, what we're going through, we can live our lives in response to him. And we must. You know why? Because we love people. The people, especially some of the people that are most tempted to um, move out of the peace with or those that I'm closest in relationship to, that I'm most vulnerable to. And those are the ones that I most want to be in this place of intimacy with the Savior and I, to come into this bubble of grace and to just come and be intimate with us here. And we're a place where we could just truly be naked and unashamed in his presence together. And I want that so bad that sometimes I can want it so bad that I begin to start fearing instead of having faith. And the relationships where that faith and that spirit is most needed are the very ones where I struggle with it the most. So if you're like me and you struggle, let's just agree that we're going to stay in the spirit no matter what and let nothing hinder us from walking in the fullness of light with Jesus Christ. As he says, and I refer to the scripture often because it's kind of my life verse, 1 John 1, 7, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin so that we don't get to choose if someone else wants to come into the light. We, we want to control, especially in the relationships we're closest to, but we don't get to choose. But we do get to choose if we stay in the light. If we stay in the light, if we stay in that blood, if we stay in that fellowship with Jesus, even when we're right in front of these relationships with people that we struggle with, that we're most fearful of something falling apart with, we can bring the light of his life 
into their world, into their bubble, and they get to choose whether they want to step in or not. But so often what we do is we see them go into the flesh or we see them go in a direction we don't want to go. So then we either run off and chase them in the flesh in our own effort without the spirit and responding in a carnal way, even if it's a godly, what we perceive as a godly way. But if it's not in the spirit, it's not really God. It's just our own perception of him, but it's not him himself coming after them. It's us coming after them. <laughs> And we find ourselves drained and back in this place of just confusion and despair again. But we can also do another thing, which is we see them responding to us in the flesh and we'll start responding to them in the flesh. And then we feel defeated because we're like, man, I wanted to do what's right, but I went, I went the wrong way. The flesh is always going to try and awaken the flesh. But the spirit in you doesn't have the hope of awakening the spirit in them unless you stay in the spirit. So I challenge you today to stay in the spirit. Follow the good counselor and live according to life himself. And live your life as a light truly unto him, inviting other people in. And no matter what, not leaving this space with him. Because only when we're in him is there a hope of true transformation, not only in that person, but in the relationship you experience with them. So that's it for this week. I love you. Thank you so much for walking with me as I seek to follow the good counselor. I'll see you next week.